serious trouble in Laikipia. The deputy president loses his temper in Laikipia and Kenyans are shocked. Well, the truth is they should not be shocked. Indeed, regulars of this channel should not be shocked because they have information yeah, that would make the events that unfolded in Laikipia boring, ordinary, predictable, yeah, as bad as it was. What exactly do I mean? Well, you'll find out very quickly on my show today. You see, to understand stuff, you can't avoid history. But we have been told wachana na history bwana ina bo wachana tuambie mambo ya saa hii yeah so we are not supposed to talk about history but we are supposed to understand the character of the persons involved now how does that even happen how you tell me anyway there's some very interesting stuff coming up stay with me till the end and you will totally understand Karibu sana. Everything that happened in Laikipia the other day was predictable. There were absolutely no surprises. But it would seem that most Kenyans are shocked. Most Kenyans are surprised. Why? Because they don't have certain information. They don't have the history. Yeah, we're told Sahau history, Imambo history, Wachana Nai. They don't have the history. They don't have the geography. And because history is boring, these Kenyans who are shocked cannot even begin to understand the character of the men involved. The character of Mainan Jenga. The character of William Samoy Ruto. The character of Aiden Dwale, yeah, who appeared on a TV talk show yeah, to speak about what happened in Laikipia. Yeah, and to accuse one person and one person alone for being responsible. What? And it's going to get worse as we draw closer to the general elections. You know, I remember in the days of my political lecturer, I would come and give him an analysis that I thought was very smart, very clever. And then he'd just look at me and ask me, what is the history? What is the geography here? I was young in those days, and you know the young. Yeah, in fact, the Chinese have a very good proverb, sarcastic one. Ask the young, ask the youth. They know everything. And so I would find this question from my political lecturer. Annoying! A waste of time. Yeah, wasting our time to get to the nitty-gritty of the issue. And so I understand Kenyans. Yeah, I was there. I understand young Kenyans. Somebody is 20-something and is trying to predict the outcome of the next general elections. <laughs> By the way, I have nothing against somebody being young. It's good. Now, Jana ni Majimoto. Enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah. But be careful to gather something to assist you in your later years. Gather wisdom. Wisdom is better than money. Wisdom will help you where your money cannot help you. What is the character of Mainan Jenga? And today I'm going to be very blunt. Mainan Jenga is a mobilizer. Mainan Jenga, when he was in school, used to predict what the news bulletin would contain. Yeah. The one o'clock news, well in advance. And I'm not talking about the first item. 
Because in those days, the first item everybody knew, everybody could predict. Mutukufu Reis Daniel Arap Moy, Leo Alisema, yes, that was the first item. I'm not talking about that. The other items, he could predict them very accurately. So the question that comes to mind is, what powers was he using? I don't know, but I can tell you, they are not biblical powers. They are not powers from Almighty God. Because as you may know, there are only two powers on this earth. So Jijazie. Maina Njenga's Mungiki used to do very evil things. But to be fair to the man, we know that later on, he converted to Christianity. Indeed, we were told he's born again. And to be brutally honest, we're yet to see the fruits of his conversion. Yeah, and therefore, we must stick to what we already know about this man's character. We also know that the driving force in Mainan Jenga's life right now is to become the next senator of Laikipia. Now, from all that information, bottom line, anybody in Laikipia who tries to do anything that is against Maina Njenga's objectives, the result is very predictable. They'll be booed. They'll be heckled. They will not be allowed to proceed. Pure and simple. The character of a man. We also know that William Samoy Ruto, our deputy president, and a candidate for the presidency in 2022, has a temper that is the staff of legend. Now the Swahili have a saying, Hasira Hasara. The problem with having a temper if you're a leader is that you can do things, make decisions yeah, in your rage that you will come to regret later. Make decisions that will destroy people because you have power, you're a leader. That is a fact. And we all know that some people online have been trying to make a very big deal of the deputy president losing his temper. In my opinion, he didn't lose his temper. He just came close. Because when you see the deputy president having lost his temper, <laughs> you will know what I'm talking about. And so, in my opinion, absolutely no surprises from Laikipia. And we should expect this trend to continue. However, politically, the deputy president has exposed himself as somebody who does not plan ahead. And somebody who does not think through what he wants to do. Because the deputy president has all this information I've just given you. He knows the terrain in Laikipia. He knows Mainan Jenga. Why waste his time and funds going to Laikipia? Doesn't make sense. Laikipia is not one of the two counties in the nation called Kenya. It's not even one in the five counties of the nation called Kenya. We have many counties. There are many places you could have gone to. Indeed, it is not even one of Two counties in the Mount Kenya region. We have a handful of counties in Mount Kenya, if his interest was Mount Kenya. And I have a feeling he was expecting that kind of reaction, which even deepens the mystery further. Why go there? When you know there'll be a confrontation, why? To prove that you're brave? To prove that Autishiki? <laughs> Doesn't make sense to me. I'm sorry. Unless you educate me, please, in the comments area below. Yeah, because I'm always learning. And I'm always open to learning. Yeah, educate me. Why would you want to go to Laikipia? For what? Now I can hear somebody telling me, Chris, you're not saying how Raila is evil. Yeah, because he's the one who recruited Maina and Jenga to work for him in Mount Kenya. So he's also evil. Talk about the character of Raila Odinga. Okay, I shall do that. Raila Odinga is a politician. Very experienced politician. 
And in politics, you have to respond to what your opponents are doing. What did Tim Tangatanga do in Gidurai 46 to Ray Laudinga? Do you remember that incident? Ray Laudinga was heckled. He was even stoned. Yeah, people threw stones at him. Or rather at his motorcade. Please, we agreed to be totally honest. Yeah, so let's say it as it is. So if you're Ray Laudinga, what would you have done in response? Go and complain. Call a press conference to complain. <laughs> Cry foul. Say, oh, the deputy president is using dirty tricks. <laughs> is that what you'd have done? No. This is politics. <laughs> it's not a game for boys. It's a game for men. Real men. So, you find a way to respond. And you respond in a way that will be effective. So you have Maina Njenga on your side. And at least you know that Maina Njenga is not going to throw stones at anybody. That is the reality of politics. And by the way, the way Team Tangatanga works, they work on per contract basis. So what that means in the Gudurai incident, they landed on the ground, money was distributed, the job was done. In sharp contrast to Ray Laudinga's long-term approach, you have your people on the ground permanently. Yeah? So the situation remains the way you want it, permanently. You don't have to land in advance every week and distribute money to people. And you know there's a very important point here that Kenyans have completely missed. When you have one dirty player on the political scene, then you expect the violence and the dirty politics will escalate. Because when one side does something, the other side has no option but to respond. They can't just do nothing. And so this thing started with Team Tangatanga. They're the ones who started this kind of politics. Organizing people to heckle somebody. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. And so what I'm saying, things are going to get worse. The violence in our politics is going to escalate. That is the bad news. That is the reality. Even as you want to cheer the side you favor, the side you want to win, yeah, if you could step back for a minute, try and get the big picture, that is the bad news that will affect all of us. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha. Thank you.